welcome back to Joe Son Boxing. So the excellent Turkey has dipped his little tootsies in the waters of international promotion now. Uh, today was the announcement of the Terence Crawford versus Is Israel Madramov fight. That's for Madramov's um, WBA super welterweight title. It's uh, Terence Crawford. He's 36 now, moving up to try and win a, a belt at a fourth weight class. But the undercard is pretty good too. And I'll just do a quick run through it. Um, by the way, this is going to be promoted by um, Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Promotions, Gold Boy Promotions, Eddie Hearn's Matchroom, and Dimitri Salita for Salita Promotions. No sign of Al Heyman or... Um, or PBC, but then they do have that Amazon Prime deal, which I suppose, you know, they're concentrating on, or maybe they're not allowed to jump into bed with the Saudis. I don't know. But a couple of these fighters, um, certainly in the past, anyway, have been PBC fighters. And one of those is Andy Cruz, and he's scheduled to face Jarrell Big Baby, Big Farmer, whatever you want to call him, Miller. And Cruz, I think, has fought twice in five years. Uh, Ruiz, Andy Ruiz. Did I say Andy Cruz? Andy Ruiz against Jarrell Miller. Um, yeah, he's he's fought twice in uh, two years, just about semi-retired, got a couple of very big paychecks against Joshua twice, probably living the high life. And um, never body beautiful, was he? But he's taken on someone who makes him look like Kate Moss, uh, and that's Jarrell Miller. Because last time out against Dubois, I think he weighed about 330 pounds. Um, we all know about his history of drug uh, drug cheating and all that sort of stuff, PEDs. He's still 26 wins, one defeat, one draw. Andy Ruiz is uh, 35 wins and two defeats. I like Ruiz in the sense that I think he's got very, very quick hands. Um, and for such a big guy, he's... He's got a surprisingly good gas tank as well, which is weird. And to be honest with you, Miller, Miller was, I mean, he was huffing and puffing, but he hung tough against Dubois, even though he was getting the crap beaten out of him. Got stopped in the final round, of course. So there's that. Then there's um, Andy Andy Cruz, uh, all uh, the three fights deep into his, um, into his professional career, taking on the 30 wins, six defeats and one draw, Antonio Moran. Now, Moran is a 31-year-old Mexican fighter. He's got 21 uh, wins by KO. Of his six defeats, only one is by stoppage. And guess who that was to? Do you know? Can you think? It was in 2019, and it was to Devin Haney in seven rounds. I think that was Haney's last stoppage win. Um, but, yeah, yeah, down at uh, that would have been down at lightweight. Since then, he has lost a couple of 10-round decisions. Arnold Barbosa Jr. beat him. Um, wide, unanimous decision. And then his uh, last but one fight was against uh, Jermaine Ortiz, who beat him. Again, it was wide, quite wide, I think. He won a couple of rounds, two, three rounds. That was about it. Um, and that was that was in September of last year. Um, since then, he's had one fight uh, against um, Romero Duno. Stopped him in six rounds. So he's a good, you know, B-minus level fighter. 5'11", quite tall for the weight. Um, but yeah, Andy Cruz, an extremely special talent, uh, only three professional fights. Um, you know, what can you say about him? I mean, illustrious amateur career, uh, took on one Carlos Burgos in his debut and won a unanimous decision and stopped, um, Giovanni's, uh, Straffon in three rounds. And last time out, um, he won, uh, no, I think he was already the holder of the IBF international title. I, th I think he won that on his debut, actually. But he, he beat um, Brian Rodriguez. Um, yeah, a 10 round decision. And to be honest with you, he seemed to either, either he lost interest in that fight or maybe maybe he looked a little frustrated. I don't know. But, you know I thought that was maybe a few people could take a little bit of encouragement from that performance by Cruz because although he won every round I mean it was a complete whitewash 10 rounds to zip nevertheless um, yeah he he couldn't get rid of him he didn't get rid of him early so he and he couldn't finish the job even though he had 10 rounds to do it but I don't know I mean if with someone that good you're going to be ultra ultra critical 
of them hold them to such an incredibly high standard. But that'll be good. It'll be a good test against um, Moran. Then you've got Pitbull eyes at Cruz taking on Jose Valenzuela. Pitbull coming off uh, the win over Roley, uh, WBA uh, super lightweight champ. Uh, Jose Valenzuela, 13 wins with nine KOs, two defeats, one by stoppage, and that was three fights ago against Edwin de los Santos. Uh, he also lost to Chris Colbert. Well, this is interesting because he lost he lost to Chris Colbert, uh, a unanimous decision, and then they had a rematch. It was a very close fight. A lot of people thought Colbert won it, and Colbert got the job done in the rematch because he knocked out um, – no, excuse me. Get, I'm getting the names wrong again. Valenzuela. People thought Valenzuela may have beaten Colbert the first time, but it was a unanimous decision against him. So he took on Colbert in the rematch. And he defeated Colbert by sixth round stoppage. Um, so he kind of rectified that wrong. Good fighter. Um, I think he's based in America, but from Mexico, or he's certainly got Mexican heritage, as you can tell from the name. He's only 24 as well, 24 years old. So, you know, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't entirely rule him out. He's a tough kid. 5'10", we know that Isaac Cruz... He's a little sawn off shot kind of a guy. He's only about 5'4". Uh, but he's only 25. He looks a lot older. So they're kind of, the age kind of pans out, evens out. Um, and we know we know all about Isaac Cruz, explosive little sod, isn't he? Uh, but Valenzuela, if he can, the thing in it, you know, if he can box, maybe he can keep him off him. Has he got enough power? I don't know. Cruz has got a good, good chin. I, I would expect Cruz to win that. But Valenzuela can fight a bit. Don't entirely rule him out. Um, and then on this five fight card, including the, the main event, the Badramov Crawford fight, you've got David Morell. Now, this is an interesting one because I, when he was at 168, I said that Morell would be the last man standing. I would pick him, I would have picked him to beat Canelo, Benavidez, Munguia, the lot. I think he's an exceptional talent. He's 10 0, um, and he's taken on uh, Radovic. Um, What's his name? Radovic Kaladzic? 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 Radovic Kaladzic, I think is the name. Uh, I know he's a light. He's, this is for the WBA light heavyweight, vacant light heavyweight title. Um, how that works out, I don't know, because I thought that, that uh, you know, um, Bivol and Bert Paterbiev were supposed to be fighting for the undisputed, but apparently maybe maybe he's the super duper champ or the you know dancing rah rah girls champ. So they've got this vacant WBA title. I don't know what the hell's going on, but it's all bullshit in it. All these secondary titles. But Morel is fighting um, Kaladzic. Um, uh, yeah, one seventy five. This is his introduction to it. Kaladzic um, is. 29 wins, two defeats. I think he's been stopped once, and that was by Baturbiev. He got done in five rounds. Since then, uh, he hasn't really fought any killers. I mean, his last fight was against Sullivan Barrera, who's way past his best. Uh, he stopped him uh, in, in the final round, the 10th round, 10th and final round. Um, and, I mean, there's really not he hasn't done much since then. He got stopped by Baturbiev, by the way, in 2019, and he's only had... I think it's five fights since then. So you would think, even though he's only 32, he's been around a long time, but he's 32. He's six foot three light heavy. You would think that Morel, he's been kind of set up for Morel, for Morel to pick up one of these stupid, you know, secondary belts. Morel himself is quite tall, six one, good, good for the weight. Um, and uh, what is he now? 10, 10 nil with nine KOs. Um, he really is an excellent fighter, Morel. He can do just about everything. Um, but he's not gone many rounds. I mean, he did against um, Idos uh, Yerebos Nuli. Yerebos Nuli took him into the final round, which was a 12-rounder that was. And that was for the WBA uh, super middleweight title. Um, but there's no way there's no way that Canelo is going to face him. So he's moved up to 175. I bet you he could still make... Um, he could still make 168, but he's like, what the hell with this? A bit like Benavides has done. So, yeah, that's the fourth and final uh, undercard fight. And I think, you know, it's not it's not a brilliant card. It's certainly watchable. I mean, the 
the headline act alone is very, very good. Um, because even though Madrimov has only had 11 fights, 10 wins and a technical draw, no defeats, um, he's the champ. And he did look, you know, very, very good in um, dominating and stopping um, uh, Magomed Kurbanov, the Russian. That was in five rounds. That was um, that was earlier this, I think it was only March. It was very recent, February or March. Um and he dominated him. He dominated him and, and picked up the belt. So he's getting a good payday. Bud's coming up to take him on. Um, Madrimov is 29, by the way. So it's, he's kind of in his prime pretty much. He's not, probably not going to get any better. Um, but he is only about 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, and I think, I don't know how tall Bud is, but probably about 5'8 himself, maybe. So there isn't a lot in it in terms of dimensions. Even though Bud's older, he's a very well-preserved 36, of course, lives the life. Not many miles on the clock. Um, he's had 40 fights, 31 by KO. But, I mean, how many of those 40 fights have been hard for him? Not that many. Probably making lightweight was the most difficult thing he's ever had to do. Um, so I'm looking forward to that fight. I think it's a pretty good card. It's not It's not a brilliant card, but I think um, Turkey Alashek is just dipping his toes in the water, seeing, if, seeing what it's like. Um, and God knows, I mean, he's combined... With the money that he's chucking around, he's combined Matchroom, Golden Boy and Salita promotions to work together. So again, we're seeing, you know, this cross-pollination of promoters, which is really, really good. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Because you've got a bit of everything, haven't you? You've got heavyweights, you've got pound for pound best, If you know, you've got um, undefeated fighters, you know, um, Andy Cruz, David Morrell. You've got Pitbull, who's always exciting. Yeah, it's good. It's good card. Good card. And um, scheduled for August the 3rd. So we've got a little while to wait. Plenty to keep our minds occupied until then. But it's, again, it's another thing to stick in your diary and look forward to. And, hey, that's always a good thing. All right, guys and girls, thank you very much for listening to this video. I hope you liked it. Hit the like button if you did like it. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new because it takes a second and it's free. And spread the word about Joe Stunner Boxing. Thank you kindly. I'll catch you later. Bye for now.